anyway. Um, this is a nectarist. It looks kind of sad at this point of the semester. Um, but this is a nectarist. This is a male. And I guess we can see best on this side. Um, here is the testis, looking very blue, but nevertheless, there. Mine pink. Does it look pink? Mine did. Oh, yours were pink. Well, depends on which injection blew out. Okay, so there's the testis. Okay. And then we can see running alongside the testis here, this coiled tube running down, and that would be the arcanephric duct. And if we look down towards the caudal end of arcanephric duct, you can see this tissue that lies medial to it here, and that would be the... Uh, no, not... Th they're in there, but we're not... Just the big oh, the thing, the tissue. Yeah, this is the kidney. Okay, this is the nephric type of kidney. All in here, all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you can see if you pull the arcanephric duct away from the kidney, you can sometimes see the little collecting tubules running over to it, draining the urine from the kidney into the arcanephric duct. Okay. Um, cool. This is um, this is a male, so it does have this huge swollen region around the cloaca, and this is the cloacal gland. And what's the function of the cloacal gland? What does it secrete? The spermatophores, exactly. Because remember, these guys don't, they have internal fertilization, but the males don't have a penis. They plop down a spermatophore, and then the female picks it up in her cloaca. So if you find a, a salamander in breeding condition that's male, you're always going to see this huge swollen cloacal region. That's what you can tell a male salamander. Okay. Um... I think that's really about all I want to do for the for the male. A female, when we look at a female, at least if it's mature, the first thing we'll notice is bunches of eggs. And what are we looking at there when we see all these eggs? The ovary. Ovary, okay. And then alongside of the ovary, there's this coiled tube running along right there. And that would be the oviduct. oviduct, okay. And the oviduct has a nice opening at the cranial end. Which I can find real quick. Like this. You found it on the other side. You found it on the other side of this one? Actually, oh yeah, it's easier there. You're good to call. That opening into the oviduct is called the osteum tube. Yeah. And that, um, in Nectarius, unlike the shark, is bilateral. So each oviduct has its own osteum. Okay. Um, in the female, the kidneys are found here, medial to the oviduct. So right where I'm putting the probe here is kidney tissue. So it's a little harder to see than in the male because the oviducts are so big. But that's the kidney there. Okay. And there is an arcanephric duct that I'm not going to try to show it to you, but it runs right along the lateral border of the kidney there, medial to the oviduct. And that's the arcanephric duct in these guys. Um, Notice that there's not a swollen cloacal region in the female. And then there is this big sac that we can see here that extends up ventral to the gut and everything else. And that would be the bladder. Okay. So I think that's pretty much all I wanted to do for the next tour. It's just kind of a quick tour. Did we need to know where the adrenal glands were? Oh, you're supposed to look for them. What you'll see, the adrenal glands are not compact structures in a nectaris, but instead they're tissue on the surface of the kidney. And yeah, you, you could see it on. That's right. Yeah, I guess you could see it in this one. Um, if you look at the kidney, and it happens to have been injected well, sometimes you'll see little spots of, of injection on the surface of the kidney, like right there. 
and that's the adrenal tissue that just has a really good blood supply. And so you get these little kind of dots of blue or red on the surface of the kidney. Okay. It's not that impressive, but nonetheless. Okay, and mammals. And let's see which one is going to be. I think it's this one. Um, so we'll start with urinary system. And I like the rabbits better because they are lighter and easier to pick up. Um, so there's, a, there's kidneys on each side. What kind of kidney do we find in a mammal? Bean shaped. A metanephric. It is bean shaped. And it's, <laughs> yes, indeed. Kidney being shaped, amazingly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a metanephric kidney, which means that it's drained by a ureter. And all amniotes have metanephric kidneys drained by ureters. All amphibians and fishes have epistonephric kidneys of various sorts, but basically. Um, and they are drained by archinephric ducts and other structures. So this is a... Um, is a metanephric kidney. And if we cut it open, what you'll see is there's a dark central core to it here. Okay, and that would be called the medulla. medulla. And then there's an outer lighter area, and that would be the cortex. 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 Okay. And um, if you follow down to the inside of the medulla, I guess I can point to it there more easily, you'll see there's a little kind of point that sticks out from the medulla there into a space. And that point is called the renal papilla. Okay. And the space that immediately surrounds it, where I'm putting the probe now, is called the renal pelvis. Okay. And the renal pelvis is basically pelvis means basin. It's like a, a sink, a wash basin, that kind of basin. Um, and it collects all the urine. So the urine actually drips out of the tip of the renal papilla. Um, oh, um, drips out of the tip of the renal papilla into the pelvis, collects there, and then the pelvis drains out by way of the ureter, this tube that runs down towards the bladder. And now there's some other terminology associated with kidneys. So just let you know what that is. If you look at the kidney from the outside, there's a kind of an indentation where the ureter comes out and where the blood vessels enter and leave the kidney. Mm -hmm. And that indentation is called the renal hilus. And there's a space that I could put a probe into here that surrounds the blood vessels and the ureter by kind of going deep from the renal hilus, and that's the renal sinus. So those are not spaces inside of any structures. They're just kind of a little indentation, basically, inside the kidney. A lot of kidney terminology. The other terminology that you'll see is the renal pyramid. And the pyramid just describes the fact that all of this medullary tissue, the renal medulla, comes to a point at the renal papilla. So it's like it was a triangle, and that's called the renal pyramid. And in rabbits and in cats, there's just one renal pyramid. So it seems stupid to have this name since it's really just the whole medulla. That's the renal pyramid. But in humans, there are multiple papillae and multiple pyramids within the medulla. And that's why the term exists. Um, lots of mammals have you know, kidneys with more than one renal um, pyramid. OK, and that, I believe, is more or less it for urinary system, except for one thing. These tubes running from the kidneys down to the bladder, one on each side, hopefully there's one on the other side. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, one on each side are the ureters. Okay. They drain into the bladder, and then there's another tube that runs from the bladder towards the external world, and that tube would be called the urethra. urethra. Okay. And that's just a single midline tube. So there's paired ureters, then the bladder, then the single midline urethra going out. Yes. Okay. 
All right, so then on to reproductive system. And um, reproductive system starts at the testes in a male, which just happens to be, and the testes sit in the scrotal sac. And as I mentioned, in a rabbit, the scrotum lies cranial to the penis. So this is penis and the scrotum would here, they've been opened up. But the scrotal sacs are made out of the skin. And if we peel off the skin, there's still another sac inside that the test is inside of. And this sac is called the cremasteric pouch. Okay. And when I put a probe down here into the inguinal canal, or sometimes called vaginal canal, I'm going down into the cremasteric pouch that surrounds the testis. Okay. And the cremasteric pouch is basically a layer of the body wall that gets pushed out when the testis descends down into the scrotum. And so you can see, on this side I thought it showed up pretty nicely here, um, that the body wall musculature just got dragged down as part of that cremasteric pouch as the test is descended down through it. And the muscles go with it, the abdominal wall muscles, particularly the internal oblique layer tends to be retained as the cremasteric muscle. And that muscle um, controls the position of the testes. So when it contracts, it pulls the testes up towards the body and keeps them warm. When it relaxes, the testes hang down lower and get cool and happy. Um, Okay, so that's the, the cremasteric pouch and the muscles just in the wall of the pouch. If we open up the cremasteric pouch, what you'll see inside is the actual testis. So that's here. Okay. And lying on the surface of the testis, which I can find it here, right here, is a structure called the epididymis. And the epididymis is where the sperm first leave the testis and enter, or stand, well, they, where they first leave the testis. And they go down the epididymis, the region called the head of the epididymis, and around back up the <coughs> other side, and eventually end up in this duct running along, which is the ductus deferens otherwise known as the vas deferens or the arcinephric duct. Same thing that we've always been looking at in all these critters. Okay. The arcinephric duct. Um, before we trace that along, one more thing to point out. On this side, these guys very nicely pulled the cremasteric pouch down and sort of inverted it. And what you can see is there's a little bit of connective tissue that holds the testis the inside of the cremasteric pouch there. And that little bit of connective tissue is the dubinaculum. And that's the connective tissue that actually pulled the testis down during the descent of the testes during embryonic development. Cool. All right. So there's the testis. Um, ductus deferens coming up. Oh, and here's the blood vessels, by the way testicular artery and vein supplying the testis that we talked about last time. The ductus deferens comes up and what it does is it arches over the ur ureter. So here comes the ureter down from the kidney. There's ductus deferens that arches over it, drops down then behind the bladder. And so if you tilt the bladder forward, you'll see the two ductus deferens, ducti deferentis, um, ductually different, just like I said, it would be coming from either side, dropping down behind the bladder. Okay. And behind, I mean dorsal. And if we follow those down here, um, didn't we do this? Was mm -hmm. it on the other side? No, you're on the right side. Uh, why am I not seeing it? Oh, there we go. The pressure. Um, you can see the ductus deferens coming down here behind the urethra. <laughs> And there's one on either side. And it was pointed out to me in the last group that they actually unite and then join with the urethra. Okay, so that's the ductus deferens. Right behind the ductus deferens is 
a gland that empties into the urethra as well, and that's this thing right here. This is called the vesicular gland, and this secretes a component of the semen. And below and behind the vesicular gland is another gland that's actually really hard to show, but I'm going to try right in here. It's a little bit darker looking and more solid, and that's the prostate gland. Can you point out the vesicular one more time? This is vesicular, that's prostate. Okay. So here's the vesicular gland. This down here is the prostate gland. Is that different from the bulbar and the bulbar? Yes. Okay. I found okay. that too. This is vesicular, that is prostate. Okay. And for you guys, here's vesicular, here's the prostate gland down there. Can you show us? You want to show this little area you skipped, right? right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> vesicular. <laughs> and that's prostate in there. Let's see, okay. you see the vesicular yeah. right there? And there's prostate down there. Yeah. Okay, do you guys see that all right? All right. Um, okay, so what happens then is the prostate um, and bulbourethral gland, I'm sorry, probably, and vesicular gland secrete components of the semen um, into the urethra, which is receiving the sperm coming down from the duct, duct deferentis. And then the urethra runs down towards the penis. And gets there. Where did it go? Hold on a second. I lost it. Um, right here, there's another little gland on the side of the penis, on the side of the urethra at the base of the penis is a better way to put it. Right there. And this is the bulbourethral gland. And there's one on each side of the urethra. Oh, no, no, you're good. I'm just showing my phone. I didn't want to show it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you appreciate it. All right. No, Emily. <laughs> I'll clear my throat at you next time. All right. It's very good. It's very uh, subtle. But, but, yeah. okay. um, and then the penis itself, it's not fully exposed, but you can see the tip of it right here. Penis. Right there. Okay, the cat's more impressive because it's all spiky. <laughs> yes, I was telling you. I always avoid it when my cat scratches his head. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the looks. Nothing compared to the echidna penis, though. <laughs> okay, so that's right there. That's the, the I do have a penis. Okay. Um, okay, is that pretty good? Yeah, um, there's a few other things in here, but I'm not going to worry about trying to show them to you right now. I'm going to make sure we actually get a chance to look at um, a male cat, just for comparison. And uh, this, this is so heavy to pick up. Um, for this guy, Basically everything is very similar, but it just looks a little different. So here's the testis inside of the um, the cremasteric pouch, and that's been opened up. There's the um, urinaculum. Here's ductus deferens coming up, and there's a long passageway called the spermatic cord that it runs through before it eventually pops out here and runs up behind the bladder, there's bladder. So it's doing exactly the same thing, it just looks a little bit different. Okay, so for you guys, ah, go bladder, stay there. There's the testis, um, ductus deferens, this is spermatic cord that it's running up through, and then it pops out here and drops down behind the bladder, joining with the one from the other side. Okay. Ah, this thing is very heavy. Big guy. Big guy. You said I complain a lot. Uh, I 
did I say that? Um, this is a test disk, and here's the duct is deferens running up, okay, and it runs through this spermatic cord and then pops out through the inguinal canal here, ductus deferens, joining with the one from the other side and dropping down behind the bladder. So basically the same situation, just looks a little bit different. Okay, thanks, Katie. Um, For, I did have a question. For him, yeah. the prostate, I couldn't find it. Okay, you couldn't find the prostate. Let's no. take a look. The prostate in these guys looks like a little swelling right at the point where the um, ductus deferens joins with the urethra. So, any luck, I will be able to find it really quickly. While, we're all, while you're all looking at me, hoping that I will do this. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. too much damage to this poor kitty. Well, I'm doing this real quickly, but... Okay, so the prostate in this guy is this swelling right here, and here's the ductus deferens coming down. It comes all the way down to here and, and joins up right there. You see that? I see that, yes. Anyone else want to see it? I'll see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's the swelling here that's the prostate is way, way down here, and the ductus deferens is coming all the way down to join up with the urethra right there at the prostate. Okay. okay. Good test. My abilities here. Um, so there's urethra, here comes the ductus deferens coming down, and there's a swelling right there, kind of dark air, swelling, that's the prostate. Um, so you guys probably know in, in humans, the prostate sits right below the bladder and the urethra comes out of the bladder and goes um, through it. And often the prostate in older men gets enlarged, even without prostate cancer and all that sort of thing. It just it naturally tends to get bigger and often can um, occlude the urethra, which is a real problem. What's the function of the prostate? It secretes a component of the semen. So it, and which component? I don't remember, actually. I think it's an alkaline fluid that neutralizes the acidity of the vagina, if I'm remembering correctly, but I don't help me on that. I believe that's right. And I think the seminal vesicles secrete the fructose. Five minutes. Perfect. OK, let's, let's I'm show do a female. female. <laughs> you want to see a female? Okay. Be nice. mm -hmm. All right. That's all right. The females actually, no offense, but the females are simpler. So, um, and unfortunately, these females that we have here are um, in this lab section were pretty underdeveloped. In fact, where the heck is? It didn't help that I have spade in. So. Yes, this female has also been, um, let's see, dissected well. Have an ovary is the question. Did you find an ovary in there? Good. Okay. You, the, oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Right side. Good. So, um, rabbits have a so-called duplex uterus, which means they have separate left and right uteri. Okay. This one has got a simplex uterus because it only has the right side. But um, no, it, it's just the other one got accidentally removed. But here, oh, I just had it. Where did it go? is the ovary, if I can find it again, there we go. Right there is the ovary. And it's, this is a very underdeveloped female, but that's what it looks like. It's kind of an elongated structure in these rabbits, right there. Okay. This is the ovary, okay. right there. So would that be much larger if it was a fully developed? Yes, it would be larger, quite a bit larger. We didn't have any really Highly mature females, but we had some slightly better ones in the other lab section. 
Okay, and then running down from the ovary here, you can see the uterine tube or fallopian tube, and that then transitions into the uterus. So this is fallopian tube, this is uterus. Okay. So here's an ovary, fallopian tube, and uterus running down like that. And if you look to see where this is, here's the gut, here's the bladder, and the uterus is found in between the gut tube and the bladder. And the uterus of each side comes in, and the central chamber that they come into right here is the vagina. Okay, so this is vagina, and each uterus opens by its own cervix into the vagina. So that's the vagina right there, okay, behind the bladder. And then the vaginal canal runs down here behind the urethra coming out of the bladder. You guys see that at all? Okay, so here's the vaginal canal, here's the urethra. And when they unite right here, they join together to form a space that's called the vestibule or vaginal vestibule. Okay. And that's right here. So here's the urethra, vagina, that's the vestibule. Urethra, vagina, and then down there would be the vestibule. Okay. And in humans, the same thing is, um, is true, but you don't really think about it as the space, the vestibule. In humans, the vestibule is the space in between the inner lips, the labia minora, and it's a very shallow space, and the urethra and the vagina both open into it, but it's not this deep pocket like it is in a rat or a cat. Okay. Um, all right, that's it.